This is going to be our first assignment that we are project that we're going to be doing in Photoshop. Uh, so theoretically, if I, I have already taken your photo and now you need to get that photo. Um, there's two ways to do it. Obviously, I'm, I'm on a PC right now rather than a Mac. Not the end of the world, but I think this might be a little bit different. Um, for you, I have put them onto the cloud drive world thing. And if you're lucky enough to have the little globe in the bottom right corner of your um, of your little dock, if you click on that, it will actually um, allow you to get to a similar place that I have on my PC. So uh, we are looking for Maple Grove assignments. Scroll down, Nelson, and then in try one. Computer art, I know a lot of clicking. Monster me, and then we have fifth hour and sixth hour. If you're fifth hour, click on that. On sixth hour, click on that. Um, so on fifth hour, uh, you can see they're all labeled. Um, and you're trying to, you know, you can view them differently. So you can actually just grab one or two of them, or, you know, you can actually just select them all by clicking on the first one, holding down, I believe, shift click on the last one, drag them um, onto your desktop and throw them in a folder. Okay, so as you can see, mine are right here, because I already did it. Um, I can figure out which photo I want to use. I already looked at these, so I know I want to use Nelson number seven. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is open up Photoshop. Some of you already, because we talked about this day one, have Photoshop in your dock, which is that little um, bar at the very bottom. Um, some of you don't, and that's not that's okay too. Um, if you go to the rocket ship, find PS, which is Photoshop, click on it, and it'll bring you to this world. Okay, so I'm gonna click on it. Boom! Here we go. I'm gonna hit Create New. Slide that over. Um, and this is how we're gonna set things up. I'm gonna do 4.75 width and a height of six. We want to make sure that it's inches. The other thing that is really important is resolution. Um, remember, in Adobe Illustrator, that was a vector program. So the size and pixels and all that stuff didn't really matter. When we're in Photoshop, it matters a lot. If, let's say, you have your resolution at 72, um, it's going to be very pixelated, right? That, that number deals with how many pixels per inch. Um, photographs should be somewhere around 300. You don't really need to ever go too much higher than that unless you're making like a billboard. Um, but you know, for our purposes, anything over 300 isn't necessary whatsoever. Um, and it just, the bigger, the higher this number is, the larger the file number, the file is too. And so much higher than that, and it ends up being a huge file, which is pretty unnecessary. All right, so we're gonna hit create. And we end up here okay so we have a blank canvas you notice it's set up in a very similar way to illustrator where we have our tools on the left um, our control panel on the top and then our windows and adjustments and all of all that kind of stuff is going to be over on the right side okay um, I brought this up in illustrator but if you can't find something try to think logically right I know that sounds silly but like we have windows, right? If you can't see one of your windows that you need over here, go to windows. If you can't find like, you know, I want there to be a grid or guides or that kind of stuff, you know, right here. Also similar is that next to the things that we want, right, zoom in is control plus on a PC or command plus on a Mac. Right? It'll show you what the shortcut is right next to it. And for the most part, a lot of the same shortcuts are the same shortcuts that we use in Illustrator. All right, so now let's bring in our image. So I'm gonna go to File, Place, Embedded. So we want an embedded file. So that means that it's gonna be inside of this rather than a link to somewhere else. So we're gonna get Place Embedded. And we need to find that folder. So wherever you saved it, that's important to know, all right? Because we need to go there and get the picture. So I, like I said, I'm going to use Nelson number seven. So my picture, I know for a fact, is actually larger than what this is. Uh, um, 
my little frame is. Um, but it's kind of condensing it into this space. So I'm going to expand it to fill that space better. If I need to zoom out, I can definitely zoom out as well by hitting Command minus or Control minus on a PC, so I can get a better idea. And I want to take, you know, I want to take up a majority of that space with my oh, wrong button. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to hit Enter, make those little blue lines go away, and I'm pretty much set to go. Okay. Um, these next couple of bits are a little bit tricky, not crazy, um, but it's kind of our jumping off point for this. Um, and yeah, um, so one of the things is actually pretty cool about uh, Photoshop is that they keep improving and changing. So the things that were very complicated before have gotten super easy. Um, one of those things is called is uh, making object selections. In the past, we would have had to basically kind of trace it out and do all these different things. Um, but for our purposes now, all we have to do is go to object selection, and it works most of the time. I'm going to click and drag, and theoretically, what it's going to do, it's going to select me because I'm the object. Okay. Our next step is that we want the background to be white. So I'm going to go to adjustment and I and I'm I want this selected. I don't want to deselect this. So I'm doing this the whole time while there's these things called marching ants all around me. That's what people call it for some reason. I mean, it looks like marching ants, that's why. Um, so what I'm going to do while I'm have everything selected still I'm going to go to this little graph looking thing, um, bar line graph here. If I'm going to click on, and it's called level, so I'm going to click on that. And what we see over here is, is now what's called a mask. So we have our adjustment here, and to the right of that is a mask. Um, what's white is visible, and what's black is invisible. Okay, so right now if I adjust my levels right it gets darker and it gets lighter okay but the thing is I want the background to change not me and so what I want to do is I want to click on my little mask again right I know I'm clicked on it because there's brackets around it all right and I'm going to um, Go to select inverse or just, or sorry, adjustments, inverse, or I can just hit control I, which means invert. Doesn't look like anything's happened, but now when I click on my little graph again and I move these around, you notice it's only doing the background. Right. So what I want to do is I want to bring my the right side of that over a little bit until it's white. Much better. Okay. Uh, I don't have much hair, and that's okay. You know, that's just how people work sometimes. Um, but if you have hair that's a little crazier, or a little sticky outy, or you got parts that are gonna get cropped off, there's a couple different ways we can fix that. Um, option number one is that if we go click on our little mask again, I can adjust my feather and that will make it so it pops out a little bit more. Uh, the other thing I can do is what's black is invisible and what's white is visible. I can go around with my white. I can grab a paintbrush. Just like in Illustrator, I can adjust that paintbrush up here. So hardness is probably good around 60 or 70. Maybe I'll bring my size a little bit up. Hit enter. And I can kind of, oop, control Z. And I can kind of go around the outside of that and I can get a little bit more. Oh, switch it to black. I'm sorry. 
right? Not great, but it works. Um, I can actually go, if I go with a fuzzier brush and kind of stay really close, you won't see nearly as much, right? So if you have some of those hairs in there, that is a way to do it. Control Z is to go back. Once you are happy, you got the white background, the picture looks pretty good, everything's set up, ready to go. We're gonna compress it into one file, one image. So I'm gonna hit Control. So I'm gonna go over to my layers on the right. I'm gonna click on my top layer. Control, Shift, E. It turned it into one solid image. If you're on a Mac, you're gonna go Command, Shift, E. And that brings it down to one file. In Adobe and in, in Photoshop, we want to work, for the most part, not always, we want to work non-destructively. So what that means is that we can always go back and adjust things. When we compress things like that, we can't. You know, so like I said, most of the time. But from here on out, we want to work non-destructively. Um, and so we want to kind of have backups and that kind of stuff too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my little layer over here and I'm going to drag it down to the plus. So now I have two copies of that. Okay. My bottom copy called my background, I'm going to click on the eyeball and I already have it locked because it was my background layer. And from here, I'm going to hit save. So file, save as. I'm going to save it on my computer because our cloud isn't great, just being real. And I'm going to label it first name, last name. Monster me. That's the name of the project. And I'm going to hit save. All right, in the next video, I'm going to go through, I'm going to kind of walk you through how to touch some things up.